Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to talk about database care from TuxCare. Specifically, I had a chance to sit down with Jim Jackson from TuxCare and talk about database care. But actually, this interview was recorded last year and I didn't get a chance to upload it until now. So I definitely wanted you guys to see this interview because it was a lot of fun. So one thing you'll notice is that, well, I'm a little younger because you're about to see me from 2021 pre-beard and before I actually installed the, you know, panels behind me on the wall. But if nothing else, you'll see how the studio used to look. But the most important thing is that the conversation that I had with Jim Jackson was a lot of fun and I definitely want you guys to check it out. Now, even though I recorded the interview last year, it's actually still timely because Database Care is actually in beta testing right now and you can help them out by, well, beta testing it. Anyway, in the interview that I had with Jim, we talked about how the idea came up, the problem that it was trying to solve. It was a great conversation and it could give you some background as far as how database care came to be. And then you could also beta test it for yourself and check it out. And maybe you could actually help the project. That would be awesome. Anyway, the interview that I'm about to play for you again was recorded back in 2021, but it was a lot of fun. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and play that right now. And then I'll see you at the end of the video. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back. I'm joined once again with Jim from TuxCare, and we're going to talk about database care. How are you doing? I'm good, Jay. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Doing awesome. So it's been a little bit of time since we last spoke, but for those out there in my audience that might not have seen the first conversation or heard the first conversation, um, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself, your job title, what you what you do, and things like that? Sure. Um, so the, I'm Jim Jackson. I'm um, president and CRO um, for Cloud Linux Inc. Uh, and for TuxCare, which is uh, really our enterprise facing brand under Cloud Linux that we launched uh, earlier this year. And it used to be known as Kernel Care, which um, is still a product, obviously. But right. um, if I'm correct, you guys changed the name because you're doing more than just live patching the kernel and you didn't want to be siloed into that one thing. Am I correct? That's that's absolutely correct. Um, we set off on a mission um, over a year ago to start live patching a lot more than just the kernel. And as that portfolio grew, we really needed to, to kind of create an um, umbrella brand for everything we were doing uh, for kind of the non-hosting world. Um, and that includes not only more live patching services, but also Linux support services. Um, we started doing end of life services uh, almost a year ago now, back when CentOS 6 went EOL. Uh, we're doing Oracle Linux 6, we're doing Ubuntu 16, we'll do Debian 9, uh, we'll do CentOS 8 um, end of December when it goes EOL as well. And that's been hugely successful, which caused us to also start supporting actually current version uh, Linux. All that combined, we, we knew we needed to create a larger brand and that became TuxCare. Awesome. So, you know, I joke around, but I'm so serious about this. Like, it seems to be like you guys are paying attention to the things that drive us Linux administrators crazy. And like, <laughs> hey, let's fix it. <laughs> Cause right. I don't like reboots and I certainly don't like a rushed end of life like CentOS 8 just all of a sudden, um, you know, coming, um, basically just being closed down at the end of December. And yeah. these are things that are really keeping us up at night. Yeah, yeah, that's actually exactly what we do. I mean, our, our roadmap is really formed just by listening to customers, um, listening to customers and prospects. And when we hear kind of the same thing over and over a few times, you know, we kind of say, we need to do something here. And so um, that's where a lot of the live patching things have come from, uh, this customer input. Um, CentOS 8 EOL, actually, we can throw them a lifeline for CentOS 8. We can support that for four years after EOL, just like we're doing the others. So listen to your customers and, and deliver what they're asking for. That's what we do. Absolutely. So um, another of, of my favorite products or one of my favorite products is kernel care. And I think that's just a good place to start before we get into the main topic here to kind of um, give the audience, for those that aren't already aware, um, just an example of what it does and what, what your, your products do to kind of make things easier on us. 
speaking for myself, I hate rebooting anything. Um, I don't even mm. want to reboot my laptop because why? It's 2021. <laughs> why are we still doing this? Right. And um, the concept around live patching a kernel at first was wild to me because it's like, that was one of the only reasons to reboot a Linux server. There's a few other reasons, obviously, but yeah. when the kernel gets updated, you're still running on the you know the one that wasn't updated. You, you reboot, and then it switches the kernel to the one that you've upgraded to. But the concept of live patching is just inserting a patch right into the running kernel to avoid a reboot. And this is just where it started for me when I um, first met you guys. And... Um, it, it seems so easy, but it's not rebooting a server. It's just not. And it's just one of those things in the industry that just really blew me away with all the clients that I worked with. It's like I tell them there's a major vulnerability in the kernel. It's time to patch it. And yeah, yeah, let's uh, reboot the server in a month. Maybe at the end of the quarter, we could do it. Um, is that okay? No, <laughs> it's being right. taken advantage of right now. And um, a lot of the companies aren't set up for that. So um and then we have other products of yours as well. But then getting to database care, um, what are some of the things that you guys have seen that have ultimately led to the creation of that? Sure. Um, so just like kernel care um, and library care, which live patches uh, MySQL and um, uh, glibc, or not, sorry, <laughs> glibc um, and OpenSSL, um, we saw that, you know, we were we're on a mission to live patch anything that causes uh, organizations to wait to patch, and namely anything that's that's difficult to patch uh, because you know kernel care exists because um, the only way to to update the kernel was to reboot it. Um, and as you say, it's not only a hassle, but it's the bigger problem is having to wait until you have a maintenance window to do that, um, especially if you have a, if you have a lot of workloads. Um, and we saw the same thing with the shared libraries. Um, you know, uh, we had customers saying, hey, kernel care works great, but we're still rebooting because we're just not sure which services to balance when we update libraries. And so we just reboot anytime we have CDs that affect those libraries. And so we, we created library care to solve that. Um, and then we saw the same thing with databases. Um, uh, you know, organizations that, that have large databases a CVE that affects them, it can take over an hour to restart the DB. And so you have the same problem. They're going to wait until they have a maintenance window to do that. Um, and it gets very complicated. And so they were basically sitting on CVEs. Uh, and, and we've seen data lately that even 30 days isn't good enough anymore. Um, the average time for exploits to show up in the wild on published CVEs is like 15 days now. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, that's some some research we saw some from Gartner, um, and then Palo Alto actually just did some research. We saw that like eighty percent of the exploits are against CVEs that haven't even been published yet. So um, so it's really becoming, and we're seeing a lot of the regs starting to tighten up to say you need to patch CVEs as soon as you know about them. Uh, right. So that's a problem um, in anything that's difficult to to patch that you need to restart. So. That's why we created database care. Uh, it allows you to patch those CVEs while the database is running. There's no need to shut it down or restart. So just like the kernels, the libraries, QMU, which we also do, which is problematic if QMU is managing a lot of VMs, um, restarting it is a real pain. So you know organizations tend to wait to do that and the same with databases so that's that's kind of the mission we're on and that's why we're creating database care that's so amazing i i kind of feel like in some ways restarting a database server is worse than restarting a server because you know even if you are a company that has like five servers for your one app to where you could do a rolling reboot of each you still have yeah. the database server behind all of that yeah. that right underneath that. And some people, obviously, a lot of companies out there will have a um, database cluster to where they mm -hmm. not only have multiple servers, they have multiple database servers. Um, but in my experience working with clients, the um, database cluster systems out there are a lot more, they're just more archaic. They just have more moving pieces that they're harder to maintain. And I've seen yeah. so many times where someone, you know, a client has this and then a database server just like, 
there's like a split brain mentality when two servers, for example, a primary and a secondary MySQL server are synchronizing data and that link is severed, that one has to get caught up. And then technically they're running off of just one database server, which is a liability. And sure. now you guys are just, yeah, let's just not need to reboot those. So um, that way, I mean, we don't have to be um, tethered to these um, old school problems that we've been dealing with. Right. That's that's the whole idea. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're still early into um, you know delivery of database care. It was a it was a particularly difficult technical problem for the team to solve. Um, if you think about it, live <clears throat> I mean you know live patching the kernel, um, inserting code in memory while things are running is not for the you know faint of heart. I mean it was right. a difficult problem to solve as well. But you know the the kernel is kind of a finite. Uh, space, you know, I mean, I think we have kernel developers that, that think about the kernel like I kind of think about my house, you know, I I know where all the rooms are, I know what goes on in there, I know where things come in and where they go out and, you know, and, and you know, um, but it's amazing what they do in live patching and the way we live patch kernels, we don't actually deliver the patch in the form of like a kernel module. It's code that goes directly into the running, you know, uh, kernel code in memory. You know, we write the the patches in assembler, um, uh, compile them down to machine code, and uh, so it's amazing what we did there. When we did library care, um, it was it was a kind of a big shift because now we're talking about things in C, and so learning how to live patch in C was was different. You know, we we solved that, and we have a, a lot of co customers on library care now um, patching um, OpenSSL and MySQL, which are both very or I keep saying MySQL because we're talking about database care, glibc, which are very large attack services. Um, uh, database care was an even more daunting task because now like Maria, which is um, the first one that we're supporting in beta now, uh, MariaDB on um, on CentOS 8 uh, is, is mostly C++. Um, and MariaDB like MySQL is actually not just one library, it's a, it's a collection of libraries. And exception handling in C++ is very stringent. And so there were a number of challenges that we faced of trying to patch CVEs in, in, in those databases. Um, and we ended up with a solution where our patches actually get delivered in the form of the library themselves. Um, but, but what happens to make that work is, is, is pretty amazing technology. And our team just really came up with an amazingly elegant solution to it. Um, so... Yeah. That is just so amazing to me because it almost feels like trying to rip a tablecloth off a table without disturbing the dishes on top of it, you know, <laughs> trying to find a good process yeah. for that. Um, so what distros, or does it even matter what distro um, do you guys support with database care? Yeah, it's a good question. So right now in beta, we're just on MariaDB and CentOS 8. And and so mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why I said that we're, we're still kind of early um, phase because um, when we move to other distros in, on Maria, um, those are going to be distinct builds. Um, and then when we move to MySQL, that's still another distinct build because MySQL has nuances versus Maria and has nuances on each, um, each specific uh, distro as well as where the customers actually get their, what, what repos they update from. Um, and then we can move to Percona, which is still another flavor. And then we move to Postgres. Now it's a whole different you know, um, setup that we have to deal with. So onboarding um, uh, different, basically the way database care will work is a specific um, uh, d a database version uh, on a specific distro will be, you know, kind of a release that we support. And so that that's there's a lot more effort involved there versus just onboarding kernels like we do in kernel care. You know, over the years we've built, built in, a lot of automation to be able to do that. Um, we're the team supporting more than 4,000 kernels today. Um, wow. And, and so that we pretty much perfected. Database care, it's still new. We'll have to build in automation to be able to do the same things there. But, you know, that's that's kind of the, 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 the task at hand. I think uh, one thing that a lot of people should know is that if you're an outside attacker, a database server is like the holy grail. I mean, that's like... Yeah all the data. I mean, 
if you're, I mean, if someone's trying to pull personally identifiable information, it's in the database. And even if a, you know, corporation has like multiple servers and, you know, a couple of servers go down and have auto healing to where, you know, new servers spin up in their place or even auto scaling, um, there's still a database server at the back end of that. So even if someone gets into the database server, it doesn't matter how many servers they delete and respawn because the corruption's in the database, the malware is triggered in the database or whatever it is. So the database server is like the most critical part of, prob- I would guess, the majority of web apps out there. So I think you guys are doing something that could really transform the administration scene um, as someone who has dealt with this firsthand and have see, has seen what happens with these things um, and the types of things we go through to try to secure these things as best we can. Um, yeah, it's like rebooting is hard enough, but um, we have to because, well, we used to have to because we have patches to install and you guys yeah. are going to make it so we don't have to reboot. So I think it's a lot easier to sell to the um, higher ups. Hey, we need to do some patching. Don't worry. We don't have to reboot. There's going to be no downtime, but we got to do it right now. I, uh, I I would love to see the numbers, like um, the companies that don't patch because of this kind of problem that now do. That's going to be amazing to see. Yeah, it's it's really ramping up. Um, and we've seen lately, like, uh, the regs are definitely tightening um, because everyone sees what's happening. You know, um, the number of CVs is only rising. Um, adversaries are getting much better at building exploits really quickly. Um, and you're right. The database is 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 a, a huge problem and a, and a, an amazing, you know a, a number one asset for um, data breaches. Right. You know, right. if you think about um, attacks on the kernel, other things where you can get privilege escalations. That's the favorite um, hunting ground for ransomware guys. You know, give us a lot of money, we'll let you use your systems again. Um, right. On the database side, it's more about you know quietly taking all your data and selling it, and um, that's those are things. Huge data breaches are what get you in the headlines and really destroy companies. It, um, yes, so absolutely. It's, it's and weird. I think one of the worst things about this, and I think it's a psychological problem, not a technical problem, because I, I think a lot of people are like this because it's just a human thing where you see on the news that a really bad thing has happened to a company. Mm. Oh, that really is horrible for them. Then they just go about doing things the same way they've always done it. You know, um, include you know, you know, it's not. Oh, maybe we should like install that patch that they didn't install when they got ripped wide open. Yeah, maybe next month. <laughs> and then I, I've literally had people come to me, and um, or actually I went to them. Like, and I, I use this example a lot, but it, it's happened with so many different companies where I tell them it's time to reboot or, or it's time to patch. Eh, no, and then like. You know, a few days later, uh, why is my server running slow? And then I find a crypto thing on there or a crypto miner or crypto locker or something. Well, I told you guys we probably should have handled this sooner, like I told you. Um, Especially for managed services providers, I think this is especially a win for them because if you're a managed service provider, you are really nervous about this. If you, the more clients you have that Mm -hmm. don't want any disruption and refuse to, patch, um, the more of a chance there is that you're, as an MSP, going to have a huge problem. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and what we see is is more and more IT security and, and um, infrastructure teams are being kind of directed by the compliance org. Um, it's, it's, you know, not that, yeah, we, we'll patch when we get around to it. It's like you have to because we're trying to achieve SOC 2, we have an audit coming up, or we're trying to get to a higher level FedRAMP cert, or we need PCI DSS, or, you know, any of the, lately we saw TSA has revised their regs saying anybody governed by TSA, um, in particular, uh, we, we, we're seeing it in uh, oil and gas transport, um, you have to patch like 30 days is not good enough, 15, you have to patch CVs as soon as you know about them, period. Um, and if you don't, you know, you're, you're going to have a problem with compliance. Absolutely. Yeah, I've been through a SOC 2 audit myself. I helped a company with that once. And they go deep. 
they go really, really deep and they check right. everything. Um, it's just astronomical, the amount of uh, attention to detail that an auditor, um, I mean, that's what they do, right? That That's what they're there to do. Um, and, and to help with compliance is a, is an amazing thing because it's so hard. I mean, they go, even the documentation, they, they want to see that updated regularly and, and yeah. at least audited um, if it needs to be updated regularly. And then you're patching, password expiration, user account maintenance, account closures, like all those different things. And they take this really seriously and it could be a major burden for a company to achieve SOC 2. Mm -hmm. um, and if, you know, I think things like this will definitely help because it, it's part of that overall solution that they would use to uh, be in compliance. Yeah, yeah. And, and more and more companies are seeking it because it's, it's kind of a form of trust. I mean, we, we went through it. We're SOC 2 type 2. Um, compliant because you know a lot of companies don't want to deal with you if you're not you're too much of a right. risk so yeah yep. that that's absolutely the case that so a lot of msps will lose business because of that very yeah. reason and i have seen it firsthand um there's wins and losses you win the big account sometimes you don't and sometimes that's the reason because they have that requirement and they're not gonna and, and they shouldn't let that go um yep. so Wow, are you? I mean, with all these products that you guys are doing that are making our lives easier, are you going to save the world next? I mean, what's? <laughs> I mean, we kind of are in a way, at least for us. One step at a time. Yeah, I mean, um, it's it's interesting. Database Care has had uh, uh, a, a huge amount of interest. I mean, we have a lot of customers that are chomping at the bit to to test it in beta. They want to deploy as soon as possible. So. Um, we're, we're growing the company like crazy uh, in terms of, you know, the, the people that we're adding, developers, testers, patch builders. Mm -hmm. um, if you know any patch builders that want a job, we have a lot of openings uh, as we're growing. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's great times. It's, it's challenging, but, um, yeah, I'm glad to see the reaction from the market that we're doing the right things. You, you are doing the right thing. It, it, it's, I think... Um, so one of the other issues on a human level in IT is we just accept the way things are. Oh, I got to reboot things this weekend. Guess I'm going to mm -hmm. cancel my plans. I'm going to go into the office mm -hmm. or a remote or whatever, and I'm going to reboot all the systems because this of a CVE came in. Um, and they're all, it's just an occupational hazard. It's what I have to do as an administrator. And, and there's truth to that, but at the same time, it, there doesn't seem to be as many people thinking, hmm, is there a better way? Do we really need to do it this way? Mm -hmm. And it seems so obvious, but it's not. Because if it was obvious, this wouldn't even be a problem to solve today in 2021. You wouldn't have anything to do because it'd be so obvious. But you guys have your work cut out for you because there's a lot of things. And you know, I could even come up with a few more complaints that might lead to a product. Who knows? Um, because definitely I'm opinionated. That's why I have a YouTube channel. But um, in all fairness, um, it, it's just amazing to see this um, progress to make everything easier for everybody to improve security, which benefits everybody. Literally everybody on the net is benefited mm -hmm. by this because the more people that are patched, the less problem or fewer problems other people have. And I, I think it's amazing. And I want you guys to like majorly succeed because this is absolutely what we need. Cool. I appreciate it, Jay. Uh, always a pleasure to be on here talking with you as well. You as well. Um, is there, are there any your uh, like websites, URLs, or anything you want to point people to to find out more information? And I'll also put it in the description. Anything you give me as well? Sure. Everything is at tuxcare.com. Um, okay. So, yeah, anything you want to find there is there. Um, we'll continue to, you know, look for other things that are problematic to patch and deliver live patching against those. And then uh, down the road, it's kind of we found ourselves in a situation where we're we're patching like pretty much all the critical things. And so mm -hmm. a better way to manage all that will be coming as well. So, so oh, wow. I'll be looking forward to that. And maybe I'll be chatting with you again about that when it's time to reveal it. I hope so. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Jim. I had a lot of fun chatting with Jim, and I hope to do so again very soon. In the meantime, though, check out Database Care. I'll include a link down below that you could click on to join the beta test, and if you can help out with that, that would be awesome. And Database Care is awesome itself because since it aims to eliminate a maintenance window, specifically around database maintenance, that's a great thing because any time that we can eliminate a maintenance window, that's a great day. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again in the next video.